Good morning, everybody. Hi, how are you, children? I hope you are doing well by the grace of God. Today, you are going to see a new normal virtual practical classes by our physics, chemistry, biology, and computer science teachers. Students, please utilize. Welcome to Velavar Metro High Secondary School. Today, we are going to visit physics lab. Okay. Especially, we are going to observe this uh, high secondary first year experiment. Okay. The first two experiments, spiral spring experiment, and second experiment, the reference column apparatus, and the third experiment, Stokes method, and fourth experiment is simple pendulum experiment. And totally we have eight experiments. So we are going to do all these exp eight experiments in this academic year. Welcome to Physics Practical, I.S. Academy first year. Today let us be discussing experiment number six, viscosity of a liquid by Stokes method. The aim of this experiment is to determine coefficient of viscosity of a liquid using Stokes method. The formula given theta is equal to 2R square del minus sigma into G by 9V. Whereas theta is nothing but a coefficient of viscosity of a liquid which is measured in term of human and second per meter square. R represents the radius of the spectral ball which is measured in the term of theta where then this represents density of a steel sphere which is measured in the unit kilogram per meter cube where sigma is the density of a viscous liquid which is also measured in the unit kilogram per meter cube where g is the acceleration due to gravity which is measured in terms of meter per second square where v is the mean terminal velocity which is measured in meter per second for viscosity of Stokes method meter scale 1 meter long glass jar Castor oil, high unit viscous liquid, a thread, and then a metallic spherical ball of diameter 3 mm, and a digital stock ball. Procedure Take a long glass jar and clamp it in your meters. The second step, now fill the glass jar. To the cast oil, highly viscous liquid. This is an excellent, excellent liquid whose portion is supposed has to be determined. Action. Now the jar is filled with your uh, experimental liquid cast oil. This is a metallic sphere of diameter 3 mm. Now let us take uh, one a metal sphere of 3 mm. Gently drop in your cast oil. You can see the metal sphere moves initially with an accelerated velocity. After some time, it moves with a constant terminal velocity, which has to be determined. Now, when a metal sphere of diameter 3 mm is dropped in a long jar, it travels with an accelerated velocity up to sunlight and it attains terminal velocity. So it is marked using a thread, it is marked a reference point, say 40 cm. This 40 cm is a metal bomb that it attains to a terminal velocity. Using a thread, a reference point A is marked at a centimeter of 40 in your long centimeter jar. And then another thread, make a reference point B, say, 70 cm. Now the distance between these two reference points. This reference point represents the back of your metal, metallic sphere attains terminal velocity and it is a reference field where we have to calculate the terminal velocity from a 40 cm to distance between these two reference points say 30 cm. Now let me take another a metal spherical bore of 3 mm in diameter which has to be dropped in your long cylindrical bore and the time taken to travel from the reference point A to B has to be determined using stopwatch. Now the metal uh, spherical bore of diameter 3 mm is dropped in a, a long cylindrical when it reaches the reference point we have to start the stopwatch. When it reaches the reference point B then we have to stop the stopwatch. The time taken to reach a distance traveled by a metallic sphere from say 40 cm to 70 cm is 4.56.
Now the distance between these reference points between reference A and reference B is 70 minus 40, which is 30 cm. But whereas the distance covered by the spherical ball should be in meters, so it should be written as 0 0.00. And the time taken for a walk to travel at reference point A to B is measured as stop stopwatch as 4.56 seconds. The experiment is repeated for different different distance travelled by a spherical ball. Let us change the reference point B to say 70 by centimeter. And the distance travelled by a spherical ball from a reference point A and B now it is 35 centimeter. Where it is in meter, it is 0 0.3 centimeter. Now the experiment is repeated. We are again dropping a metallic sphere, a long car jar. And the stop clock is started when it reaches a reference point A and it is stopped when it reaches a point B. The time for a metal ball to travel from a 40 cm to 75 cm is measured in a stop watch, which is measured as 5.6 second. Now the distance covered by a spherical ball in half second is 35 cm, which is in meter, the 0.35. The time taken for the metallic sphere to travel a distance of 0 0.35 meter is up minus 5.64 second. Now repeat the same experiment for a different distance, say 80 cm. The reference point B is changed from 75 cm to 80 cm. Now your reference B is at 80 cm and your reference point A is at 40 cm. The distance between these two is 40 cm, whereas in meter it is 0 0.40. Now, Again, let me drop a metallic sphere, a metallic sphere of diameter 3 mm. Let me start a stopwatch when I reach the reference point A, and we switch off the stopwatch when it reaches the reference point B. The time taken for a metallic sphere traveling from reference point A, say 40 centimeter to reference B, 80 centimeter, that is 40 centimeter, 0 0.4 meter. The time taken is. 6.35 seconds. For distance d meter is 40 to 80 is 40 centimeter second. Now it is in meter, but it should be 0 0.40. The time taken by a stopwatch for a distance travel is 6.35 seconds. By knowing, by tabulating the distance covered by a spherical ball in meter and time taken in second, now we are going to determine the calculation part. The last three. Last three, v. So the last three, we determine the formula v is equal to distance uh, covered by a spherical ball and time taken. Your first calculation, the distance travelled is 0 0.30 meter and the time taken is 4.56 second. Then the term last case, v is equal to d by t is equal to 0 0.30 divided by 4.56 which is equal to 0 0.065 meter per second. Similarly, for your second reading, your distance for your second reading is 0 0.35 meter and the time taken is 5.64 second. Now the terminal velocity is d by t is equal to 0 0.35 divided by 5.64 which is equal to 0 0.062 meter per second. Now for the third problem, the distance travelled by a spherical ball, d is 40 cm, the meter is 0 0.4, the time taken is 6.35 second. Then the terminal velocity is obtained as d by t is equal to 0 0.40 divided by 6.3 which is equal to 0 0.64 meter per second. Now, the mean terminal velocity, mean terminal velocity, v is up time, by summating all the three values to this, 0 0.064. 0 .06 plus 0 0.062 plus 0 0.064 divided by 3 where b is equal to 0 
1 by 2 my divided by 3 is equal to 0 0.063 meter per second mean total velocity is equal to 0 0.191 by 3 is equal to 0 0.063 meter per second how does it say mean total velocity is determined mean total velocity for each value is written as 0 0.065 that is 0 0.062 and your final value is 0.064 then your mean terminal velocity V is obtained as 0.063 meter per second whereas viscosity of a liquid by Stokes method is to determine coefficient of viscosity we are going to apply a final calculation before final calculation theta we have an observation that the diameter of your spherical block which we draw using scratch which is measured as 3 mm and the radius of the spherical ball is 1.5 mm which is 1.5 mm to 10 power minus 3 meter where del is the density of a spherical ball which is known as 7860 kg per meter cube where sigma is the density of the experimental oil where we use this cast oil which has a density of 970 kg per meter cube now the final calculation the coefficient of your viscous liquid this cast oil is equal to 2 R square del by sigma G by 9 V where R is the radius of the metallic square which is determined as 1.5 mm so it is written as 1.5 into 10 power minus 3 whole square where del is the density of your metal spherical ball which is 7860 minus where sigma is the density of the asteroid which is given as 970 kg per meter cube where G is the acceleration due to gravity so the value of constant value of 9.8 divided by 9 whereas the mean terminal velocity V is obtained from your tabulation as 0 0.063 meter by second. On solving it, we have a value 0.3038 divided by 9 into 0 0.063 is equal to 0 0.567, which is equal to 0 0.519. Newton second for meter square. Result. The coefficient of viscosity of your given cast oil is equal to zero point five one nine newton second for meter square. Thank you.